Thank you, Sam. Um, yeah, thank you everyone for coming out today. I know that there's like protests happening and there's a lot going on in the town, so a lot of people that are meant to be here are not. So I do appreciate you, you, your presence um, and we'll have this available online for anyone who wasn't here if you want to share that with your friends and peers and, and other people um, around town that you know. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to stop talking and introduce Rosa. Um, well, you can introduce yourself, but um, <laughs> thank you so much for coming down here today um, to have, have this conversation with me. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've, you know, we've, I've, got, I've been a fan of your work for a very long time. Um, from when I was first introduced to it, actually um, doing a course with Black Blossoms Online. A short course. That was the first time I kind of was introduced to your work and I saw you perform and I was like, who is this? <laughs> um, um, background on me, I'm a curator now, but previously a moving image artist studied here, so seeing kind of that moving image and performance artists um, who were of kind of my age and generation practicing and doing really intentional work, like it was a real eye opener for me, so. It's really nice to be here talking to you about four years later. Um, so yeah, do you kind of want to introduce yourself and your practice? Um, yeah, I can do a bit of that, yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much for having me here, Bajan, I really appreciate it. Um, Bajan also does a lot of amazing work and um, curating. Recently had to show at 154, uh, <laughs> which is pretty amazing. And uh, yeah, kind of, uh, yeah, early career artists, I guess, um, um, exhibiting them a lot of them in their first show. you kind of go about the work you produce and how you share it with the world and share the space. Um, so the first line of, of your bio is Rosa Johan Adol is an interdisciplinary artist working towards radical self-love. Yes. So that's deep, right? Because that's, that suggests a journey interior but also exterior and the way kind of you use your work and experiences to Consolidate your, pers your 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 personhood towards yeah self love and self worth in a space which we all know kind of as black and POC creatives can yeah bring you sometimes further away from that idea and that kind of notion. So 
how how much as a as you as an artist and kind of yeah that that being the intro, your introduction to the world like what made you come up with that like what does that sentence even mean to you um because i just really appreciate that as kind of the first line of your bio it's quite deep like radical self-love as a as a mixed race woman uh, practicing in kind of yeah the art space which we understand that's really kind of a white supremacist space, like, yeah, what, that's quite deep, so what was the journey towards that? Yeah, thanks for asking that, um, it's a really good question. I think um, when I wrote that, it was kind of like, um, it was a, like a statement of intent kind of thing, like it's like a mini manifesto, and I really wanted to um, state that publicly, um, as well as privately, so that in some ways I could kind of to help myself hold myself account to account to make sure that that is what I'm doing. And even though it's like uh, obviously, you know, every day it's like, you know, in day to day life it's quite difficult to keep that as a centre at the centre. Um, with with the um, with the stresses of being an artist as well as the great joys of being an artist. And then also like, you know, the other things that you can kind of begin to chase as an artist kind of inevitably such as, you know, uh, um, Know, financial reward, uh, clout, all of those yeah, kind of yeah. things. To keep it at the centre, that the reason that I wanted to do this was really to the reason that I wanted to become an artist was um, really to learn to express myself. Yeah. And that's something that I'm still very much learning to do. But I find that I'm really able to do that through through art in a way that I haven't been able to in any other career that I've had. Yeah. Um, so that that's that's I guess that's what it means to me. It's about self-expression. It's about it's about um, a vocation to learn about myself. That's how I see my art, and I hope. And that's that's great for me in that it can help me to love myself more. But it's also I do think that then beyond that, I hope that it has like a social impact because of the ways in which I'm working in order to understand myself often involve roping other people in, yeah. um, trying things out, trying things out with other people, be that through conversation, through collaboration, and um, often through lots of through lots of laughter, which I think we'll come on to a bit later. But um, so so it's really a uh, so I think from putting that putting my self expression at the centre and feeling secure and good in my in myself and with all the political implications that that has in the back of it, then uh, then hopefully also has a social impact. Perhaps people can resonate with it or perhaps people can actually get involved with it directly. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and then I guess theoretically, I mean the, the actual words, mm -hmm. radical self-love, they come from Audrey Lord, who is um, you, know, you might know and who is who was a uh, Black feminist, um, writer, poet, activist, mother, sister, etc., etc., mm -hmm. uh, and who basically has been hugely inspirational in my life, her writings and her poetry, uh, particularly her essays. And um, she has this idea, which you might have seen, it's often distributed even on Instagram now, which is about um, self care as political warfare. And it's this very radical idea of self-care, which is, um, yeah, which I try to carry through throughout my practice. Um, it's this, she has this very famous essay called Poetry is Not a Luxury. Mm -hmm. If you haven't read it, I really encourage you to. You can type in the word into Google, it's free PDFs online. Um, but it, it's really like kind of talking through this idea that I think actually comes up in a lot of um, conversations with um, within the diasporic communities communities of colour, yeah. which is um, like a kind of assumption that we might think that uh, poetry, that performance art, that art is perhaps too much of a, a luxurious thing to spend time on mm -hmm. in a time when you've got like huge financial constraints and serious issues, right? Um, but would you know really kind of like values against that? and. Um, talks about all these people within the black community specifically who have um, basically used art to overcome very, very real oppression. Yeah, I think that's why I really wanted to ask you the question because 
For me, although I'm a buyer and it does not condense what your work is about, it also sets the tone for whoever decides to kind of interact with your art or your work or yourself because it helps, like, yeah, set the boundaries, really, of your intentionality and that if someone wants to kind of interact or learn more about your practice, then what they're really doing is stepping into the conversation of social, social and political implications of, as you said, being a black woman and then being a black woman artist in highly kind of charged, hostile times. And as you said, like, producing work or being an artist, a performance artist or a poet, um, especially within the diasporic communities, or for what we see, when the economic and social economic climate is as hostile as it is, like it is at the moment, it's when, it's when you see artists like yourself really holding the space and verbalising a lot of things that maybe the general public or non-artists um, wouldn't feel comfortable doing. So for me, that's what that says, that's what that does. So I just wanted to kind of hear, yeah, hear, hear your why and your reasoning behind that. So, yeah, no, thank I'm you. Glad, I'm glad you guys see a bit of that. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, so moving actually from, from that point into the next point quite, quite smoothly, um, I just wanted to kind of talk to you about what space means to you as an artist, but also kind of as a researcher and academic in the institutional space. So as you said, a lot of the work you produce, as much as it's performance-based, there are physical objects in your exhibitions um, to kind of provide context for the performance work that is, that is the stage, right? So yeah, I kind of wanted to yeah, kind of hear about the journey or the process of what it means when you are kind of given the opportunity to have space and how you then make the space yours. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I think, so I think the first few works that I made were very much um, from the starting point of using my body and then kind of working outwards from that. So I start with what I had. And, uh, and then slowly move outwards until I've ended up at the moment with quite large scale installation work. Um, before I did uh, before I did art, I studied fine art as slaves. I did a masters. Um, that was the, the kind of first thing I did in art, really, uh, at four. Um, but before that, I studied architecture and I worked in architecture for a few years. Um, so that was really like that was my background, and so um, one of the things that I was really interested in architecture was about the social aspect of space. Um, and this is something that I had many conversations with Akil and with Seth in the Zoll about because we, we actually shared a studio together for quite a while, and, and thinking about um, how thinking about feelings of exclusion that we had in the space in certain spaces, how a lot of former institutions, such as the university, are often very white, very middle class, and um, there's, a, there's, a, there's also, uh, you know, ableist, and there's a, there's a kind of perceived way that you're meant to act and perform, yeah. to use perform in a kind of everyday sense, um, in these settings. Mm. So, um, you know, that was a conversation that we were all having when we were doing our undergrads, and then later on when we graduated and we're kind of going into cultural spaces such as galleries, museums, etc. And even just the workplace in general. Yeah. Um, but um, then we started to think, well then I started to think as, as well about, uh, okay, what, what would it look like if I could design space? Um, for me, I realised that in order to do that, to have that conversation and to really start to enact it, I would have to move out of the architecture space. Yeah. Which is kind of feels <laughs> quite counterintuitive because like, yeah, you go there and you think, oh, I'm gonna design buildings. But I really needed to be out of the space that had like a strict hierarchy. The architecture profession, you know, there's a there's lots of accreditation and you've got to jump through. It's like, you know, it's like being a doctor. So you I needed to move in a space where um, my, I, I could I could start to do stuff on my own sleep. I could be a bit more yeah. entrepreneurial with it, and I could be a bit more um, experimental with it, and I could be trusted 
and the lived experience that I had with the band leads. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of where I moved to performance. Then, after that experience, it became quite important to me to kind of address what it was that I had, to not rely too much on external resources, which I didn't have that much about that time, yeah. and to see what was possible for me to do in terms of manipulating space, transforming space, just from my body. So a lot of it was thinking about like volume, a lot of it was thinking about getting groups of people together, um, uh, a lot of people with things were using quite cheap materials, mm. costume, I made a lot of like collective costumes. So one of the first and probably most experimental things that I did was I made a giant um, Meghan Markle costume <laughs> out of, um, out of um, that kind of canvas fabric that I've got and like painted it just using acrylic paint. Yeah. And um, six people fit inside of this costume, including small, yeah, six, uh, five adults and one small child. <laughs> and uh, it's the head. <laughs> and uh, yeah, like this is one of the first things I did, and I think that was just to really see, like, okay, how much can I do with my body? How much can I do if I combine a few bodies? Mm. And then what if I have like an overarching umbrella of body to put all of those in? So yeah. it's that. That's that's kind of. Yeah, <laughs> how it started to grow, and then I did start to make more set pieces um, that were like kind of installation elements that would exist outside, um, outside of the performance. I was interested, obviously, if you, you're a live performer, uh, people aren't gonna, you, you're not performing all the time normally, so installation is really a great way to have remnants and I have myself be in the space when I, when I wasn't there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think that's kind of yeah. the journey that I went on with that. What was kind of the like the transitional period between like working professionally in architecture and then kind of moving into the art space and then moving into the institutional art space as a student, then artist, and then also kind of as a as an educator now? Because so you are you do do lectures, you kind of. Yeah, you, you share, share a lot of your knowledge and like kind of what the question I'm asking is the way in which you work is there's a collective nature to it, there's a collaborative nature to it, a lot of people are involved, there's obviously a lot of pre-discussions pre and conversations and kind of figuring out being in the space together to produce these works, right? Um, so now being in the institution but in the way of an educator, what do you think kind of you bring to that space having gone through education you went to cambridge right so that's an experience in itself um i don't know what the kind of the numbers are as a, as a as black or poc students in terms of percentage but i do know it's really low and very hostile um, because i've had friends and peers who have studied in the Oxbridge. um so what was it like coming from that kind of institution of academia, then into the architecture space, and then, yeah, into this art space, but as an educator, and how, yeah, what would you, kind of, what things do you bring that to the, to the students, to, especially kind of the, the new or younger kind of black and POC creatives in those spaces that, that kind of would be happy to see there, firstly, but kind of, do you, yeah, what do you bring to, to them, really, from years and years of experience? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, when I, uh, one of the reasons I wanted to become a teacher um, was because I wanted to uh, be the change that, uh, uh, that I wanted to see in the world, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not funny, but I get it. It is funny. It's funny. It's funny. It's funny. It's funny. <laughs> Therapist, and she laughed. <laughs> <laughs> um, because I think the thing is, is that, um, yeah, it's, it's not really a, a problem that I can fix. Yeah. Um, and there's no way I can go back in time and, yeah, um, yeah, do, do any, undo any, um, undo any of that. But I think what I can do, what I have learned about is, and while, while I'm still a teacher, because I've been doing that for like three, three and a half years now. Yeah. Um, I work at Central St. Martins and I teach in a performance course. 
is um, I've really been thinking of, and, and experimenting with non-hierarchical learning. Mm. Um, so rather than being like, rather than I guess being a, a black replacement for a white teacher, yeah. like a white lecturer, so like swapping it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm trying to more like dismantle the the power dynamics that exist in universities, yeah. um, exist in, in my classroom still, um, because um, as I'm sure like you know, I mentioned with you as students. Um, me, me being a, a black lecturer isn't really enough to uh, to to readjust the power structure because often the student body isn't very diverse. So then what happens in this? I guess I'm a a, a black woman and as it's like a minority that in a, in a white classroom still. Yeah. So actually, it's kind of in a way like a similar situation, not the same situation. Because I am in a position of power, I mean, I'm older, I have knowledge, I have those degrees, like, yeah. um, and, and there's a lot of power in that. And I grade, I grade the students, right? <laughs> 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 but, oh. exactly. but on the other, you know, there are other things that are going on in that room as well, which are not so clear. Like it's not, you know, it's 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 there's it's very complex that environment. Yeah. And um, so really what I'm trying to do and, and, and like, you know, I, I, I'm doing this, you know, mainly for the, the, the students of colour, but I'm also doing it for myself, is, mm. is to create, try and create this non hierarchical environment. And that's really um, um, about seeing myself not as the holder of all knowledge, but seeing myself, I guess, at the moment more of a facilitator. For everyone to speak, for everyone to express yeah. themselves. So it's kind of like saying what I'm trying to do with myself, right? In terms of using art to express myself, I'm just trying to get the rest of the students in the classroom to do that and to feel comfortable to do that. And that's not a very easy thing to do. It's not necessarily something that I've like done super successfully. Yeah. But that is kind of what I've started my classes with, and that's what I'm trying to do. Is to basically get to a point where like I can get quieter and quieter in the classroom until I like, just step away and we're just like doing the learning on their own. Um, and that's beneficial because it means that my experience isn't thought of as the most important. Yeah. And yeah, it's very difficult as well because a lot of the students, and I understand why, are quite resistant to it. They do really want me to stand up and give like a lecture and give them a class. So what, does, so what does it look like practically? Practically. Yeah, so if I was in, if one of us were in, were kind of in your class yeah. um, as a black or POC student, how would, what would the like, kind of first the art 20 minutes of, of, of that look like? I'm just intrigued as someone who also kind of went to art school, went, went through that system uh, with a small kind of community of other people of colour around the building, yeah. um, but not necessarily in the classroom, so kind of, yeah, how does that actually practically play out? Yeah, um, so um, first things first, we, uh, it's quite, not quite simple moves, right? Mm -hmm. There's no big shapes. <laughs> Basically, first thing is that uh, we sit around a table in like a square or a circle. I'm not standing at the front. What happens in the first class is often like no one sits next to me, so that they, <laughs> everyone just like wants me to be at the head of the table. So it's really funny oh. how like even at a circle you can have like, a hierarchy, yeah. and then I'm like, please, someone sit next to me, and then they were like, what? And I'm like, just please. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that. That's one way because again, I'm trying to stop myself from being the focal point. Another thing that I start to do is when students talk, um, they'll often just talk to me, and they won't look at any of their peers, and um, I'll just stop giving my contacts. Oh my gosh. But then I realised <laughs> that maybe they can come from being a bit rude. So then I decided that I have to actually let them in about what I'm doing. So actually, I just sit down very transparently, say, this is what I'm trying to do, this is what I'm trying to do, right? Mm -hmm. and, and that helps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the looking away thing did help, because they eventually they stopped looking at me. It's, it's important. Yeah, that's, that's a very like um, practical way to do it. Actionable way to be like, collectively discuss and collaborate and like yeah. kind of evoke uh, an environment for collaboration, so yeah. yeah, that's quite interesting. Yeah, it's interesting, I'll let you know how it goes, but yeah. <laughs>